One of the most interesting things about the Yukon is that they're constantly uncovering the remains of extinct species, records from its glacial period. I've come to the Baringa Centre to dig up some more information. Liam Campbell is guiding me around the displays. Liam, this is an incredible place. Now, the animals that existed here a long time ago were all part of a, a special area called Bringia. Mm -hmm. Tell me about it. So Bringia is a crossroads of continents. Yeah. Uh, it was a land bridge that's come throughout time, throughout millions of years. Uh, it's in the Bering Strait today. Yep. And it's between Alaska and Siberia. So we have an exchange of species going on for millions and millions of years. And there's some animals here that people will have never seen before because they don't exist on the planet to this day. And this, this sloth is a really good example, right? What did it used to eat? You used to eat avocados, or its ancestors at least, and yeah. would spread them throughout uh, where we find them today. And it literally would be passing the seed around, probably creating avocado tree forests. Basically. And um, further back, you've actually got some pretty incredible mummified remains. We sure do. Let me show you. Okay. The youngest mummy that we have here is a Yukon horse. It's 27,000 years old and uh, now extinct in this part of the world. Here we have Zhur, a uh, gray wolf pup that dates to about 57,000 years. Uh, Zhur is the Han word for gray wolf, which is the language of the Trunda Quechen. 57,000 years old. This literally would have been buried in permafrost and just protected for that whole period of time. Exactly. Wow. Exactly. All this is discovered by miners, hey? And then our oldest mummy is the caribou back here, dating to 80,000 years old. That is just incredible. The Beringia Centre is a great place to explore and learn so much about this region's ancient history. But I've got another destination I want to show you. It's a great new food venue and probably the only restaurant in the world with an incredible glass art gallery. So tell me the story about Gather. So John and I approached uh, Lou and Mel about closing in their back storage place of the Gosselin studio and yeah. putting in a restaurant. Uh -huh. We are so proud of all our local flavors that we have in the Yukon. Uh, there's so many great suppliers and beer and cider that we thought we want to bring together in one place. And your specialty is coffee. Yes. And so, John's a mixologist. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah, I was a barista for years and I love to bake and I thought I would do the morning shift and yeah. he would do the evening shift. It sounds to me like a lot of fun. And what's yeah. great is bringing the art, the glass art together. I mean, every single glass is unique and beautiful. And it's because you've got mum next door creating amazing things at the same time, right? Yeah, they've been open for seven years now and they have five-year-olds creating on the bench. They have 99-year-olds creating on the bench. Wow. In fact, our oldest creator is 99 years old. And the name of the cafe? Yeah, Gather the Term um, comes from glass blowing. When we were trying to figure out a name, it hit us that when you gather glass, from the furnace, and you keep gathering, and we said gather people, gather glass, it's the perfect thing. Well, I've got my unique Yukon gifts, and after the break, I'm taking you into the area that most people who live here have fallen in love with, the unique Yukon wilderness. It's an icon. I'll see you after the break.